Good evening. Um, yeah, I'm just sorry. I'm a gate crasher, so I'm going to not. Gate crashers are always the worst because they overstay their welcome. I'll do that 15-minute thing. Um, but yeah, this is is something that I'm very passionate about, and I'll tell you why if I can work this button here. Yes. Okay. So we started our agency in literally 25 years ago, um, and I. I mean, that was the queues at the polling stations. We were setting up an agency and everyone was leaving the country, right? We were going to sell baked beans and tins and everyone was hoarding them. Um, and why bring this up? I just think it's so relevant now. Because we, I mean, I look out there and there's protests and fires and burning tires and things going down. And I remember at the time, people were like, what are you doing? Like, and right now, people are probably going, what are we doing? And why are we here? And I just think... It's always the best and the worst of times. There's always hope and fear. There's always contradiction. And the circle's kind of turned in 25 years. And I kind of go, there's never been a better time because where there's conflict, where there's stress and strife, there's opportunity. Um, and that's when you need this sense of purpose or ideals more than ever. Um, so when, where we were, we were starting this agency and... We were kind of like, well, okay, if anyone, oh, I can see a few of you were around at the time. Uh, <laughs> good, mature audience. Uh, but seriously, like, you starting an ad agency, it felt a bit like shallow. You're going to make some ads and this miracle of a country being born with all this amazing stuff that happened. Uh, so we, we were like, Proudly the first agency born in the new South Africa and a new democracy. So we wanted to think different, be different, grow different. And it was part of our soul and it was just something that came out of that. And it's, it's a lot what Fred was talking about. You just follow something that you instinctively have within you. And we straight away, we want to make more than ads. This thing is too special. We want to make a difference. We want to put back. So we put things in place in the agency where we had a special PDI trust, which we still have today, where we had a diverse partnership amongst a whole lot of different people. Um, and, and we wanted all our work, look, as a creative, you never want to be boring or bland, but we really wanted to be provocative and cheeky and challenging, but we wanted to always leave something better for what we've done. And you know how much boredom and yawning ads can create. We are not invited into a room, we gate crash. So we had to, and so we, we tried our best to do things differently and find our humanity. And it was quite a tall order then because agencies there were chasing awards or you know, trying to do a slick ad. And we were just saying, no, we want to do stuff that makes a difference. And every now and then we've managed and other times we failed. But it, I think it's about thinking about this. We're all from different industries. And I think right now we need to keep going. Industries are always taking. There's always a sense, like, why can't we find some more balance and find our humanity and give back a little bit? Um, and what we've discovered over the years, and I mean, pick and pay, I think, was used to say this, and it's, it's the Raymond Ackerman thing happening here, but doing good is good business. So it's great. They haven't done too badly, and I've always loved that because it's not just about being, a, you know, a do-gooder and sackcloth and ashes and be... It's actually good business. It's good business principles, especially in a country like this or a continent like this, and especially where the world's going today. Um, so we created this thing called MAL, okay? And the American, M-A-L, um, but MAL, we loved it because we, we creative. We have to be true to who we are. I mean, we aren't, we don't wear suits. We can't be taken too seriously. We are a bit MAL. <coughs> So let's use that. Let's use our creativity to make a difference. Let's use ideas. They're not just an indulgence. Ideas are a very powerful weapon. They can change things. Um, Africa is blessed with creativity. It's the one sort of natural resource we actually have. And South Africa is just packed with this a wonderful natural resource. We don't even have to mine it. It's all around us. Um, so, you know, that's what we thought. We, we want to harness Africa's most powerful weapon, Ideas. And try to give purpose to ideas. Ideas on, are actually the thing that can change, and that's what we work with. So let's use that. So it was quite fortunate 
that mull, we just wanted to be mad, and then I pounced upon this Churchill quote, which is, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. And what I loved about this is it's such a nice way of looking at your own business or your own life and go, how do I make a living? And I just think there's such a divide between the haves and have-nots. And actually the haves have jobs and the have-nots don't. Um, and, and I love the fact that we make a living from creativity. I make a living from ideas. So maybe I can make lives by that. And it's the challenge we give to our clients and to anyone I sort of rub shoulders with or rub whatever I rub with. Uh, it's like, <laughs> how mild do you want to be? Like, what do you make a living from? Because I think... Where it hasn't worked is when you do charities and handouts. Um, it's kind of not sustainable. Because, but if you make bread or you make shoes or you, you do ideas or you make books, then there's something that, that's the way you make your living. Maybe you can work from that area of expertise in terms of making lives. So we sort of try to push this duality in terms of you can still make your living, but while you're at it, can't you make lives at the same time? Can't we find some way of getting this duality right? So what I just wanted to talk to you about is what we've called creativism. Because I think creative is a misnomer, as I said earlier. It's like, it can be just a bit abstract, but if you put action to creativity, it suddenly has a huge resonance and a huge value. Um, so we want to be creativists. We don't want to just be, oh, yeah, like I'm creative. What does that mean? What do you do? Where's the activity? So we've done a whole lot of things. Um, and so this is like just as a summary. So you can kind of see. So, yes, we're a collaborative design hub. So this came out of the agency. It's a little bit like it was interesting hearing your story, Fred, because so we have this ad agency, but at the heart of it was this thing we called Mull. Like we were like, ah, that's a Mull idea. That's... But actually, as we went over the years, we were like, geez, that is actually an idea that makes a difference. It's making a, a life out there. It's what we do as a living. It became the core thinking in the agency. Um, and what's happened is as I've got more silvery and, and sort of more doddery, I've kind of been able to spend a bit more time pushing this agenda and actually trying to create this design hub. I work with young designers. And the agency carries on still doing this hard stuff, but I can actually push this agenda even more um, and actually try to put something back in with absolute sort of purpose now, as opposed to sort of dabbling and trying to, you know, you've got to get that focus. And I think it was interesting hearing Fred going, you know, just finding what is that thing that you may be good at or that excites you or that you're passionate about. And what's amazing, um, we started with one library because we were like, where did we get excited? It was imagination. It was books. It was like being able to like escape. And then I look around us and we were working with a township school. We did an amazing solar powered billboard for a bank. And we were like, the school doesn't even have a library. Then we found the stats. 8% of public schools have a functional library. I mean, we've got no chance. You're surrounded by this world that's hemming you in. And then when people did do a library for them, it was this, looked like a cell. It looked like, I mean, no, no matter how underprivileged I am as a kid, I'm not walking into that cell. If you start out in a cell, you're going to end up in one. And these were just little cells for books. So we're like, let's try doing like a really cool library. So we started with one in Alex. Um, we got our client Chicken Licken to help because he started in the townships. We were like, come on, George, give back. And between us, we put, we put up half and George put up half. And we created, I'll just show you the one on the, so that's the first one we started here. Um, and we, we loved, we found a partner called Architects of Justice. I think we chose him because we liked the name. <laughs> Architects of Justice. There's no justice in architecture. So... And we, were gonna, we thought, we'll just do a, like a container. You know, you always start. And they were like, no, that's boring. Let's do two. They were like, no, let's do three. So, I mean, the first, those top left, it's three containers. And then we realized how environmentally unfriendly they are. And we spent half our money just making them environment friendly, cutting them up until they weren't containers anymore. Um, and, yeah, the guys had a rooftop and a beautiful open shot. And this was this, 
They had the best library in Santon, never mind. But it was so cool, and, and we worked with, um, and that's when we met an NGO called Breadline. And I think that was also finding out what you can't do. We didn't understand education at all. We collected books. And everyone gave us their encyclopedias, their bad read novels, stuff that was totally age inappropriate. This is a primary school with 1,200 kids. <laughs> so all these books we got, the librarian was like, we can't use any of them. And then we found the people who made the bad libraries and spoke to them. And they went, we love this library, so now we collaborate with them. And we've done uh, 13 libraries since then. Uh, and each time working with brands, that was with Pick and Pay, that was with um, Samancor in Maricana, and then we started uh, uh, Danny and Cabello, the musicians were angry about crime, like we all are, but we said, let's create a brand called Shout, and we did a music video, and we created a trust, and they collected a lot of money, and then we said, instead of just tackling crime after it's happened, why don't we stop it happening in the first place, uh, let's do some libraries. And we've had a group evaluating these libraries, and we've now done seven with Shout, and it's been really effective. Uh, we're trying to make reading cooler than crime. Um, and that's really interesting, because all the, a lot of these kids see the coolest things are the gangsters. They've got cool cars, cool clothes, cool phones. So let's make the library cool. So some of them think this is a club, but it's actually a library. <laughs> uh, we went to, Mar uh, to Kuruman, the desert is not an exciting place. We made it brighter than ever. You have to wear shades outside. Uh, this is in Bushbuck Ridge. Took about an hour just on the sand road getting off the... So, but what's interesting is you see the difference this is making. Now, 20,000 kids are going through these libraries. Um, we get report backs to keep it sustainable. As I say, I'm totally... I mismanage. Everyone else manages. So we've got guys looking after the education side. We've got a really great module now that's working. Um, and we, this final school that I just want to talk about is in Salt River, just, well, down up the road uh, near Woodstock. Um, and how we raised money for this school, we said, let's try something different. Let's create uh, like a brand. Uh, uh, work with a retailer approach. I said he'd like to do some CSI. He's a small retailer. It's called Marlboro Originals. It's a men's shop you might know in the VNA. They've got some other outlets. Smallish entrepreneurial company. And we just said, like, okay, we'll do a range for you, and you must put 25% back into a library. Um, and we'll do the designs. You have to buy the designs, and you must make the clothes, and we'll just shake hands. And it was amazing. We just... Sometimes you get a chemistry, and, and uh, Anthony was like, okay, show me the designs, and if I like them, we'll do it. And we showed him, and I'm actually wearing one of the shirts. This is the season two. Um, and we got a crazy designer, and we said, we'll create this thing, and we created a wear it forward campaign, like pay it forward, but we had wear it forward. We did a whole window. He didn't think he was going to get a window. We took over his whole window at the V&A, and we sold hundreds of T-shirts and caps. And now this next library, most of the funds have come from this crazy little range. So this has been, and we're now in season two, and we're going to do a season three. So we've located this, uh, we've looked for a school that was close by his factory, so these guys can see. It wasn't just some crazy guys thinking of a silly idea. There's the school, there's the library. Um, and that's what we did. And these were some of the things that we sold. Um, so they were just cool designs, but it was wear it forward, and you got a bag, you got a sticker, so there was a whole package. You walked out feeling, I got my cool t-shirt, so, and someone got a township, a township school gets a library. And in fact, that's, we were going to do a township school, then when we were looking around, we found this underprivileged community in Salt River, just around the corner from the biscuit mill, and totally under-resourced, under and they are so excited, and we, we're launching this in two, two weeks' time. And, but just to show you, these were some of the designs that he bought. Uh, it's like really cutting-edge, contemporary, beautiful design. Um, and we now have a, a fantastic little model that we're now trying to sell to other companies to say, why don't you do a little mall collaboration uh, where a percentage goes towards, we're talking to at home now, 
Uh, we're talking to the wine industry and anyone else who's interested. But it's an amazing, it's like a simple little model. We have, we have all the you know, partners where it works and we do something creative, we use ideas and the consumer's excited because they're still getting something cool but they're putting something back. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the, that's one of the new windows. And then we, we, one of our designers came up with these lamps. We call them animal lamps. Uh, and we're looking to find a partner for these. Uh, we've already got a lot of interest. We've sold quite a few at the Ranyazuk market. They gave us a stall because they liked what we're doing. So we're just sort of thundering along and having fun and putting back. And people are loving the story. And so I'm excited because I've done the agency thing. It's a quarter of a century now. I mean, that makes 25 years feel longer, right? Um, and they're carrying on, and I'm trying to push this agenda because I think the world needs different models of creativity, of entrepreneurship. And uh, we're getting quite a lot of interest. That's a, a one travelers are really liking. It's the lamp you make with your kid. It's a kit, and the guys can carry the whole thing and take it in the plane. And so we've got a lot of uh, tourists that are liking that one. Um, and then, yeah, these are just some zines and... We've got a thing called, this is what we're going to maybe work with at home. It's called Malhais. It's a whole lot of beautiful uh, stuff that's going, bags and a whole lot of stuff. But the, the whole thing is just to work with like-minded entrepreneurs and come up with ranges that put something back. But still have fun, give the consumer something. We're doing earrings. The Mocha, du Mocha Museum have bought some of our earrings for their museum shop. Um, and yeah, so it's just, we're looking for a chocolate. Anyone make good chocolates? We're working on some chocolates for good. Um, Honest chocolate? Yeah, we've actually spoken to them. Okay. And the problem is they're already doing quite interesting things already. Um, but we've spoken to a few guys. We just want to make a, a sugar, are looking, we're talking to sugar um, in, in Seapoint. But if you've got anyone else, we're really keen. Um, this is the new library that's coming up. We're playing little games with Escher Designs. Uh, the guys are still working on it two weeks' time. But look at the kids already. They can't wait for this thing to open. Um, so, yeah, as I always say, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. And, uh, yeah, I just think I like the thought of it's like really good ideas. So it's not just good. There's good at heart, at the heart of it. And it's about everyone just finding their spark and just an invite for you to please just go mull. You know, it's just if you can find that within you, I think we can all start doing really interesting things. Um, so, yeah, go mull. Thank you. <laughs>